Thank you, Jesus. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name, O Lord. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name. How excellent is your name, oh Lord. And how powerful is your name, oh Lord. How powerful is your name, oh How powerful is your name? Oh Lord, how powerful is your name? How powerful is your name? How powerful is your name? Oh Lord, how mighty! Your name, oh Lord. How mighty is your name. How mighty is your name. How mighty is your name. Oh Lord. And how mighty is your name. How mighty is your name, how mighty is your name, oh Lord. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we give you all the praise this morning, we give you all the adoration, you are worthy to be praised and glorified, you are worthy to be honored this morning. As we are in your presence this morning, we believe that you are ready to hear us. As we call unto you, you are ready to speak to us, O oh dear Lord, through your word. And we pray, dear Lord, that even in the circumstances that we find ourselves in, that God, you are going to speak to us the word of this day the word of this season in the mighty name of Jesus we thank you for everyone that is watching and we believe that Lord you are going to minister to them in the mighty name of Jesus regardless of what they are going through oh dear Lord you are going to address every need that they have oh dear Lord you're going to come through for them fighting their battles oh dear Lord in the name of Jesus I know many people are discouraged, many people are broken hearted, many people are desperate, but you, O oh Lord, are able to encourage us. You are able to give us strength and therefore I pray that you may encourage every discouraged soul, every desperate soul in the mighty name of Jesus. We need encouragement from you, O oh dear Lord, and from your word in the mighty name of Jesus. And therefore I pray that, O oh dear Lord, we are not going to be discouraged again after hearing your word. We are not going to be desperate again after hearing your word in the mighty name of Jesus. May you give your word power to be able to operate supernaturally in our lives in the mighty name of Jesus. We honor you, we bless you, we thank you for everyone. We thank you for your people, oh dear Lord, this morning. 
wherever they are, people that are called by your name, oh dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we believe that you are going to minister unto them. We thank you, dear Lord, for even this our nation. Continue to bless this our nation. Continue, dear Lord, to protect our nation. Continue to be there for us as a nation. We need you, oh dear Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. We invite you to be with us, oh dear Lord, through this telecast in the mighty name of Jesus. And we believe that, Lord, our souls will be comforted in you in the mighty name of Jesus. We give you praise and honor and glory and power forever and ever in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. A uh, very good morning to all of us, wherever we are, in our homes. Some of us are traveling. Some of us are even on duty. We are working. But wherever you are, I want to believe that uh, God is so good unto you. Because no matter what we are going through, no matter what you feel right now, no matter the situation in your life right now, God is still so good unto you. And I believe uh, the way he has been good unto me, he is going to continue to be good unto you in Jesus' name. Um, I'm very delighted this morning to bring you the word of God. Once again, we've been sharing the word of God. Last Sunday, we were sharing on the subject uh, the mother of all divine interventions the mother of all divine interventions and um we shared quite um um a lot on prophecy because i told you that uh, prophecy is the mother of all divine interventions and uh, I don't want to do a lot of recap if you want to follow up on that message you can uh, follow our channels our YouTube channel at uh, WGCK uh, Joy Center Ruiru and I believe that uh, you will be blessed you can also uh, go through our Facebook uh, and I believe that uh, you will find the message there so that we can be together. And I told you that today I'm going to carry on with the same because I believe uh, in this season we need a lot of prophecy. And I was asking you last week where is the prophet? And this morning equally I'm still asking where is this prophet and I'm going to show you a prophet to begin with as God's vessel a prophet as God's vessel and remember our main text is uh, Ezekiel chapter number 37 beginning from verse 1 to 14 but uh, uh, allow me not to start reading that because I started reading that last week. But uh, allow me to read Deuteronomy chapter number 18, uh, beginning from verse um, uh, 15 uh, through to 22. And the Bible says, The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him ye shall hearken according to all that thou desireth of the Lord thy God in Horeb in the day of the assembly saying let me not hear again the voice of the Lord my God neither let me see his great fire any more that I die not and the Lord said unto me they have well spoken that which they have spoken I will raise up a prophet among, from among their brethren like unto thee, and I will put my words in his mouth, and he shall speak unto them all that I, ha I shall command him. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not, or whosoever will not hearken,
And it shall come to pass, let me take again uh, verse 19. And it shall come to pass that whosoever will not hearken to my words, which he shall speak in my name, I will require it of him. And, uh, but the prophet, verse 20, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord has not spoken? When a prophet, verse 22, speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord the, uh, has not spoken. But the prophet ha has, um, but the prophet has spoken it pre presumptuously. Thou shall not be afraid of him. Now, today, I want us to continue looking at this prophet. Because I told you, you need a prophet in your life. And even as we walk through this journey of life, we need different people at different times. And a prophet is one of those people that you need in your life to continue declaring the word of God, to continue speaking the mind of God, to, sp to continue speaking the heart of God. And I told you that in the New Testament, the door of prophecy has been expanded so that we do not have just a few prophets speaking to the people on behalf of God, but we have so many prophets that are allowed to speak the written word of God. Now, in the text that we have just read, the book of Deuteronomy chapter number 18, God was beginning to establish the purpose of prophets in the lives of the Israelites. Now, remember, the Israelites were taken from Egypt, the land of captivity, to their own land, and God gave them the law so that they would be able to operate under something. Because these people were used to worshipping the gods of the Egyptians. They were um, uh, fam familiar with the standards of the Egyptians but they were not familiar with the standards of God and therefore the law was God's standards or God's standard for the Israelites so that you can only go this far and do this much in accordance to the law and if you fail to do this much this is what will follow or this is what will befall you as way of uh, punishment. And therefore, the law was God's standards for the Israelites. However, the law did not address every situation that the Israelites would encounter. And therefore, God needed to add his voice. Remember how the law had come up. Moses had gone to the mountain and God spoke to him. And uh, the law was written on stone and uh, two templates of stones and uh, Moses presented this law to the people. But this law did not address everything that they would encounter in life. And therefore there, there was need for an additional voice of God so that he could address the situations that they would encounter further while in the promised land. And as such, the prophet was introduced. Now, let me tell you the circumstances. Because the land that they were going to inherit, the land of the Canaanites, those people living there practiced all manner of witchcraft, sorcery, and all manner of uh, 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 superstitions. And therefore, they were people who purported sometimes to see the future, to know what the future beholds and maybe communicate the same to people. And God saw the danger of the Israelites 
associating themselves with the Canaanites and starting to practice their practices of worshipping other gods by way of inquiring from them, by way of witchcraft, and by way of foretelling what things would come. And therefore, the prophet here that is spoken about was to counter the practices of the heathens in Canaan. And therefore, God would establish his own prophets, true prophets. And he was saying, they will be from among them, among the Israelites, not foreigners, no. And even now, prophets are supposed to rise from among us. There is this misconception of a prophet or a man of God in quotes, especially in this our country, whereby we perceive that anyone that is local cannot hear from God. Anyone from within us cannot be able to bring something that is from God. We believe in foreign interventions. And that's why last week I told you that most of the time we have looked up to the West expecting so much. And even the people of God hear more people that are foreigners coming with the word of God than people that are locals. We, 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 we tend to believe that those people hear God better or they hear God more uh, or they are the genuine hearers of God and bearers of the true message of God and we ignore the local uh, prophets, the local men and women of God, no matter the word and the caution they are giving us. No wonder many of the prophecies that are given by our own local people are not heeded. Most of them are not heeded. No one wants to listen. No one wants to pay much attention because after all, they are people that we know. And you remember even in the case of Jesus, he said that a prophet is not acceptable. A prophet is not popular among us, his own people. In fact, Jesus, among us, his own people, they were saying, isn't he just the son of a carpenter who was Joseph? They referred to him as the son of a carpenter. And therefore, anything that he purported to bring from God to them was a lie. A carpenter would not hear from God according to them because according to them they were divine people that were set apart from some places to be able to speak on behalf of God but certainly not sons of carpenters and therefore God was saying that I will raise a prophet from a man this is what the Bible is saying in verse 18 I will raise them up a prophet from among their brethren like unto thee and I will put my words in his mouth because I told you that the prophet speaks the word of God and I brought the analogy of um, Ezekiel in chapter number three of the book of Ezekiel where God said that I will clean your tongue over the roof of your mouth that you would not speak until I have spoken to you so that you will say thus says the Lord and therefore a prophet is supposed only to speak the voice of God what he has heard because those people that were living in Canaan the diviners, what they used to do is to, after knowing the future and predicting the future, they try to secure it and control it, of course, to their own favor. And that's what happens in witchcraft and divinations. That once you are told the future, because as I talk about this, I know it's a very sensitive subject that many of us have fallen in the hands of diviners and witches and those who are foretell us through other diabolical forces or powers. They tell us what will happen and therefore they are also able to 
control that which will happen so that if it will be bad they are able to control it to be good for us that's why many people subscribe to witchcraft because they believe that their future can be secured and controlled but we are not supposed to secure that future and control it as they do because the word of God says in Habakkuk chapter number 2 verse 4 that the just shall live by faith so that we must walk into the unknown future by faith. Now this is what I'm saying that the prophet is going to speak something that you cannot be able to see or fully even understand. And that future you are not able even to explain how it will happen. But you must walk there by faith. By faith. Not by sight. Because what we see sometimes is deceiving. So I say it is not about sight. It is about insight. What? is from within what has been conceived from within not what is visible from without because without faith we cannot be able to receive and activate the promises of God let me say that again without faith we cannot be able to receive and activate the promises of God. No wonder Habakkuk is saying, the just shall live by faith. Because the prophet was supposed to, to only speak the word of God. That's why they were asking, how shall we know? How shall we know? That this is a true prophet and this is a false one. And he said unto them, if the prophet speaks something and it does not come to pass, he was speaking presumptuously. He was assuming to be speaking for God. And let me tell you, even in the days of Jeremiah, there are prophets who rose up and presumed to be speaking for God. And they told the Israelites that your captivity has come to an end and God has heard your prayer. But Jeremiah was told by God, these prophets do not speak for me. I did not send them. And last week I asked, who sent you and who allowed you to speak? No wonder we have so many people speaking a lot and um, all manner of things that do not come to pass. Because he said, if that prophecy comes to pass, that is the test. That is the test. If it does not come to pass, then I did not send them. You should know that they send themselves. You should know these are busy bodies. These are people that want just relevance. They did not speak from my mouth because I told you that every time Ezekiel was told, prophesy to the bones and tell them, thus says the Lord that says the Lord because whatever a prophet speaks he either saw it through a vision or heard from God he either saw it through a vision or heard from God and all that I'm asking have you seen through a vision and have you heard from God the ability to hear from God is very important because so, so many of us are so busy out there hearing from every other source and every other quarters. There is so much noise that is surrounding us that we are not able to hear from God. We are not even able to recognize the voice of God because the written word of God is the primary. It is the primary standard upon which we speak from God upon which we hear from God and let me tell you many of us are so quick to 
say, God told me, God said to me, God revealed to me, God, you know, saw me, showed, showed me this vision. Because, yes, God is able to show visions. But mark you, those visions are not supposed to go contrary to the word of God. And to begin with, this person that is seeing the vision must have the ability to accept the written word of God before they begin to see visions. Because vision is something that is shown by God for the purposes of communication to his people. Be it good news or bad news that are coming ahead. And therefore, the prophet who saw vision, because in the days of Ezekiel, you must understand that they do not have the benefit of written word of God. So, essentially, God speaks to them in the means that are available to them. And therefore, the priests, let me tell you, represents the people before God. I told you you need different people at different times. But the prophet represents God to the people. This is the difference. The priests, even of the Old Testament, represented the people to God. No wonder he was in charge of the, uh, the, 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 the sacrifices. He would receive them. He would offer them on behalf of their people. the people. He would go to the Holy of Holies bearing the sins of the nation and of the people and he would ask God for forgiveness on behalf of the people. So the priest represents the people before God but the prophet represents God before the people and therefore the prophet served as an intermediary. Yes, he served as an intermediary and you remember the basis of what Deuteronomy chapter number 18 is talking about is that God was saying that there is a time this the Israelites had demanded that they want to speak to God they want God to deliver the message directly to him to, the, uh, 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 to them as opposed through Moses but now when God attempted to come because they were not fully prepared they washed their clothes instead of their hearts they were they did not have the right standing to be able to withstand the presence of God and therefore the presence of God scared them off and therefore it was necessary for him to seek for an intermediary someone that would stand between them and him and, but now this is different because the priest is representing the people to God but the prophet is representing God to the people he presents God to the people so if you say that you are a prophet you must know that you are not a representative of the people to God no 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 you are the representative of God to the people and on the last week I said your work and your duty is not to fight for civil rights and all that and to say this, we demand this, we want this. No, 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 no. Because you, you, yours is to speak the mind of God, to be the intermediate between God and his people. And let me tell you, in essence, what God was saying, it is that the prophet does not care so much about how you will receive the news. He just cares. He delivered the news. <laughs> he told you what God is saying. So receive it however you want. That's your problem. Receive it however you want. Do with it whatever you want. It's up to you. It's up to you. Because he is not your representative before God. He is representing God before you. And therefore, when a prophet speaks, he speaks not on his own authority, but on the authority of God. And no wonder Ezekiel was told, and every time he was told, to speak to the bones, the word of God. The message, 
that God is giving to the bones. Because Ezekiel had been taken to these very of very dry bones, very dry, scattered all around, and he was posed with a question: Can these bones live again? And he said, It's only you, God, that knows. And he was told, Declare, prophesy unto the bones. If you see um, in 37 verse 5, that's what the Bible says. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. If you read again verse 9, he was saying what the Lord says. He's saying, Then said he unto me, Prophesy to the winds. Prophesy, son of man, and say to the wind. Thus says the Lord, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breath upon these slain, that they may live. Prophesy, speak the word of God. Then again in verse 12, Therefore, prophesy and say unto them, Thus says the Lord God, Behold, all my people, I will open your graves and cause you to come up out of the graves and bring you into the land of Israel. So that the prophet here is representing God to the people. Now, let me give you this scenario. Ezekiel is taken to this valley. God demonstrates his power to the prophet. So the prophet understands the power of God. He understands the operations of God. And he is told, to speak, say, thus says the Lord. And that is the word of God. So the word of God has power. The word of God has the ability to change things. And that is very well and clearly demonstrated unto Ezekiel the prophet. Now, he is supposed to deliver the same message. Just as you saw these bones coming to life again, gathering together, having sinew, having flesh, and finally having breath, and turning into a great army, it is the same way you are going to speak to the Israelites and tell them, though they feel cut off, though they feel that they have been forgotten, though they feel that God is not for them, or their lives are about to come to an end, he will open up their graves. He will connect with them again. So, the prophets understand the power and the ability of the word of God. Let me tell you something. If you purport to be a prophet and you do not understand the word of God, you do not understand the power of the word of God, you do not understand how the word of God functions and operates, then you cannot be effective. No wonder, let me tell you something that I've learned because there are certain lessons that I've learned through this crisis that we are going through. That many people of faith, many people that I had myself and I knew that they were believers without a doubt. They believed God. In so many situations, they never wavered. They never seemed to be doubting or to be moved by any kind of a challenge. Many people have changed. Indeed, they have changed. And you are my witness that they have changed. And I know you know people who are trying to, to say that this is not a spiritual problem, so it's just a natural problem and it should be handled naturally. Why? It is because they are thinking that this is too big for the supernatural. Let me, let, let me ask you something. Naturally, when something is difficult naturally, when it's difficult naturally, how possible is it that it is going to be resolved without supernatural or divine powers? Because this is how we operate even normally. That a child that is not able to do something for themselves, they rely on the parent who seems to be the superior, who seems to be powerful and knowledgeable to be able to resolve such a problem. So that it is not the other way around. 
that the parent relies on the child. So when you are saying this is a natural problem that should be dealt with naturally uh, and it's a physical problem that should be dealt at, uh, with physically, then you are saying that God should submit to the natural laws. Then you are saying that God should come down and operate at the level of man. But God does not operate at the level of man. He says in Isaiah chapter number 55 that as the heavens are far from the earth, so are my thoughts from your thoughts. And there he says that as the rains come from the heavens and they accomplish their purpose, so shall my word not return to me void but it must accomplish its purpose and what i want to tell you my listener is that the word of god must accomplish the purpose of god yes it must accomplish the purpose of god so that if it is the word let the word reign let the word be the supreme these other laws to all these other operations so that men and women of God yes because I said naturally let me tell you something that people do not understand that even even before this pandemic came we were living cautiously some people are behaving as though we were living so recklessly that this is the only time we need to be cautious no 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 we have been cautious let me tell you most of you have been washing your hands even before this pandemic you have been naturally clean even before this pandemic in fact some people have been keeping distance there are people that you cannot go close to naturally without this pandemic let me tell you there are people that have been keeping their distance they want their space they want to feel special so what is different with this because all those cautious measures, I heard some men of God say, and I agree with him, that we pray for God's protection, yet we close our doors as we sleep. We have been cautious in the past. Don't, 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 don't paint this situation as though this is the only time that we are cautious. We drive on the, on the roads and we know that over speeding is dangerous. We have been cautious. We see a pit in front of us. We evade that pit. We have been cautious. Why are you behaving as though this is the only time that we want to be cautious? Let me tell you, caution alone will not work. But the supremacy of the word of God must be known. Because prophecy activates the word of God. If the word of God is said, whatever God says, let me tell you in his word, he has said, he has said, if he says that you are more than a conqueror, it doesn't matter what challenge that you are facing. If he says no weapon fashioned against you shall prosper, it doesn't matter what challenge you are facing i have seen as though we are changing the word of god no 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 no. this kind of enemy this kind of weapon is superior to the word of god it's like we are saying there are certain weapons certain enemies certain challenges that are superior to the word of god let me tell you i am a believer a firm believer the just shall live by faith that no matter what i face the word of god will reign supreme it is all Powerful. So I believe I shall overcome in the name of Jesus because the Bible says they overcame the enemy by the blood and the words of their testimonies. Yes, I'm going to give a testimony that I am more than a conqueror because I am covered by the blood of Jesus. It doesn't matter who invented this. It doesn't matter the power it has uh, 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 manifested. It doesn't matter the challenges it has posed to the world. It doesn't matter the people it has challenged the sun and the experts but I know that I shall overcome by the blood and the words of my testimony I am more than a conqueror no weapon including or including corona will be able to prevail against you in the name of Jesus and I declare to you as a man and as a prophet of God that the word of God reigns supreme no matter the challenge no matter the challenge
because people must know God through prophecy this is what Daniel said in Daniel chapter number 2 verse 28 the king was seeking for answers in their own quarters from his diviners from his wise men from his council people that were ordinary and most of us are seeking solutions from ordinary things but he said but there is a God in heaven I like this there is a God in heaven that reveals secrets and maketh known to the king Nebuchadnezzar who shall be in the latter days let me tell you something there is a God in heaven <laughs> because prophecy is supposed to bring God on the surface it is supposed to bring God on the surface this is what Daniel, Daniel is saying it is it is your blunder O king that you have been seeking this solution from the wrong quarters if you had sought this solution from the God of heaven yes the God of heaven reveals the secrets of heaven and let me tell you there is still the word of God in force there is still the word of God in operation the written word of God is still there before we go to seek for any other revelation any other vision that we have been shown we must demonstrate our ability to believe on the written word of God let me tell you believe in the written word of God before you go to these dreams and visions that have been shown and this was revealed to me because that is neither here nor there if you do not believe in the written word of God the written word of God has not changed I am more than a conqueror the written word of God has not changed my plans shall not be thwarted the written word of God has not changed that in all these things I am more than a conqueror all things work together for good to them that love God and are called in accordance to his purpose I, I, I don't know I don't know but the Bible says these are the signs in Mark um, in the book of Mark uh, uh, chapter number 16 that shall follow them that believe they shall even handle sapiens take poison and they shall not die that is the written word of God I don't care whether you victimize me whether you isolate me whether whatever you say about me whether I'm operating in ignorance but I'm operating under the word of God that was written beyond many years before any kind of challenge came so these challenges are late and i want to announce to you corona you are late the word of god came before you any challenge that you are facing may i now announce to that challenge that it is late in the name of jesus you sickness and disease you are late you poverty you are late you kind of uh, discouragement you are late i want to speak to everybody that is discouraged out there and tell you all oh, your challenges are late because the word of god reigns supreme that's why daniel was saying there is a god in heaven there is a God in heaven because Ezekiel was told by God in Ezekiel chapter number 37 verse 6 13 and 14 and, and, and this is what the Bible says uh, um, at the latter part of verse 6 and you shall know that I am the Lord you shall know that I am the Lord in verse 13 in verse 13 and you shall know that I am the Lord when I have opened your graves all my people and brought you up from the land over or, or from those graves and in verse 14 and shall put my spirit in you and you shall live and um, I shall place you in your own land then you shall know that I am the Lord so that prophecy is supposed to bring God on the surface it is supposed to manifest the power of God it is supposed to make people acknowledge the power of God let me tell you something as I wind up for today that many of us that are purport to be prophets we have a problem we have a problem because the prophet here 
was not supposed to be the one on the limelight. No, 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 no. Because the emphasis was not supposed to be the revelation of the prophet. No, 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 no. That's not the emphasis. The emphasis is the message he brought from God. What is the content? What is the message saying? But today, now, why we are failing as prophets is because we want pomp, color, popularity, and all those manner of things. Now, it is about how the prophet is dressed, how he arrives, he makes his grand arrival in some big meeting attended by so many people, how he will be given the microphone, the last to speak and declare the word of God, how he shall be looking, the language he is going to be using, the kind of public address he's going to be using, the kind of sanctuary he's going to be speaking uh, uh, in, and, and all that. Who told you it's about you? Who told you it's about you? Let me tell you, it's not about your popularity. No, 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 no. It's not about people acknowledging you. <laughs> I've been seeing many people. Now, this is our undoing. That we want to bring this message. And so that people will be uh, acknowledging us as men of God. And prophets of God. And hearers of God. And or even first hearers of God. But let me tell you. No one assigned you that mandate. In fact, the prophet was supposed to be like an incognito. Someone that is present, bearing the message of God. Then he disappears and he leaves the message to magnify and glorify the name of God. But most of us, this is how we have been behaving. We bring the message and sometimes the message could be from God. Let me deviate a bit and tell you something. That the fact that your prophecy is accurate does not make you or qualify you a true man of God. I will repeat that again for the record. That by the fact that your prophecy is correct does not qualify you as a true man of God. That's why we've had many people of God prophesying prophecies that come to pass but themselves they do not qualify as men and women of God why because I'll tell you something that even Nebuchadnezzar had a dream he had a vision and his dream the one Daniel is speaking about and telling him there is a God in heaven he told him God has shown you a vision of the things that are going to, to come about your kingdom, the kingdom of the Medians and the Persians, the kingdom of uh, uh, the, 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 the Greeks, the kingdom of the Romans, and the kingdom of Jesus Christ, which shall be established and it shall not be shaken. So how is Nebuchadnezzar supposed to see such a great vision? If it is some of us, the men and women of God, who even God would not have been heard of. Nothing about God would be, because we will be boasting and, 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 and walking around and you know popularizing ourselves showing ourselves the way we hear from God let me tell you the ability to hear from God does not qualify you to be a true man of God I will repeat again because Nebuchadnezzar was not a man of God and he saw a vision from God and that vision by the way is still in effect because Nebuchadnezzar saw even the kingdom of Jesus Christ that will not be shaken <laughs> be shaken and that kingdom is which we are operating in and today we are operating under a vision of a man that did not go know God some of you think that you know God better and you boast and sometimes overshadow the, me the message because it's not about the reception of the revelation it's about the deliverance of the message of God most of us, we have, we have messed up at this point. Let me tell you, let me end here. Uh, almost a sad note that there are so many people that are out there that you started so well speaking from God, the message of God, prophesying, declaring the word of God. But you allowed your mind to overshadow the mind of God. You allowed your personality to overshadow 
the glory of God, the message of God. You have gone over and above God. So it's about you, not about God. Are we failing in such a way that God is no longer acknowledged because Ezekiel was told that they shall know that I am the Lord. The world is supposed to know that there is a God, not just a prophet. That there is a God in heaven. Daniel would have said, ah, but there is Daniel in Babylon. But he did not say, but there is Daniel in Babylon. He said, but there is a God in heaven. I want to tell you, man and woman of God, but there is a God in heaven. But the good news is that the prophecy and the word of God is supposed to bring on, on the surface God himself. So that it is not up to you to assist the word of God to bring God on the surface. God's credentials here are at stake. So that when you declare the word of God, you are saying, God, it's up to you. I have declared your word. You do the rest. It is up to you. But when you start taking credit about the message and all that, you dissolve and uh, dilute everything and make the prophecy seems like it is yours and you are supposed to ride on it and to be proud of it and to be popular with it and all that. And it does not make any meaning. It does not bring God on the surface. But when you speak the word of God, that even in this situation and in other situations that you are going through let me tell you speak the word of God because God's credentials are at stake he wants to be known through this crisis I want to wind up there today but I want to tell you something that declare the word of God and leave the rest unto God leave the rest unto God People must know that he is the Lord that liveth. The nations of the world must know that there is a God in heaven. All those that do not know God, this is the opportunity for them to know there is God in heaven. Hopeless situation, there is God in heaven. A situation that seems to be so difficult for men, there is God in heaven. A situation that is confusing the experts, there is God in heaven. A situation that seems to be no, ha, ha, have no remedy, there is God in heaven. In the name of Jesus, may I pray to this God of heaven that he may hear your prayer in the mighty name of Jesus. That even this morning, as you declare the word of God and as you've been hearing the word of God go back to the word of God and believe in that the word of God that the just shall live by faith it is not about sight it is about insight it is not about what you are able to see it is about what is conceived in you in the name of Jesus and I pray that heavenly father the God of heaven shall manifest himself in your life in your situation and show himself strong in Jesus mighty name amen amen I want to pray for the offerings in the name of Jesus as I continue thanking all of you indeed you've been so good most of you have been very faithful you've been giving your tithes your offerings through the numbers that are at the bottom of your screens most of you have been heeding the call of giving unto God despite the challenges that we are going through. And I want to assure you that the Lord is going to continue to bless you in the mighty name of Jesus. Because the word of God still reigns supreme. Yes, it still reigns supreme. When the Bible says, give and it shall come back to you, good measure pressed down, shaken together and running over, that's it. Believe it and it shall come to pass in your life. And I want to declare special blessings for you that have been giving and for you that are, 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 are ready to give this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. Just get your offering ready through the Mpesa and the, the lines are going to be uh, at the bottom of your screen and I want to believe that the Lord is going to bless you. Father, I thank you for everyone that is ready to give from you uh, and to you, oh dear Lord, uh, from what you have given unto them. I believe that, Lord, you've been blessing the works of their hands. You've been opening doors for them. 
and I believe that Lord you are going to continue opening those doors even further in the mighty name of Jesus I pray as they give Lord may they receive a supernatural miracle in their lives in the mighty name of Jesus and I pray that Lord their plans shall not be thwarted no weapon formed against them shall prosper they shall be blessed indeed they shall live to see the goodness of the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus bless everyone and give us a wonderful week for you are a wonderful God in Jesus mighty name amen and amen may the grace of God be with you till we meet again in Jesus name